Member for McEwen. Mr Speaker, I direct my question to the Treasurer. I refer the Treasurer to his statement straight after the September 87 budget that this is the great coming of age of Australia. This is the golden age of economic change. To his statement in the May 87 mini budget that we have acted decisively to turn the situation around. Tonight I can report that Australia is winning. To his statement after delivering the August 88 budget that this is the one which brings home the bacon. <laughs> to his order, statement in his order, April. Order. The member for McEwen should get to her question. Good question. Order. 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 Finally, I refer the, the Treasurer to his statement in last night's budget that the reformation of the economy is a continuing and at times difficult task. I ask the Treasurer, given that by the end of this term Labor will have been in government for 13 of the last 20 years, how much longer do we have to wait? Yeah. The Honourable the Treasurer. Well, I, th I thought we'd been in government seven. We're heading for ten. At the end of this term. At, uh, at the end of this term. At the end of this term. Ten. Where's Wedlam? Oh, we've got to carry Goff again. Order. Oh. Order. Members on my left I mean, will cease it. Not attacking. only we've been carrying Goff, we've been carrying Fraser, Howard, Pearson, <laughs> a lot of you. But. Um, and that's why uh, the Treasury had a few well-chosen words for all of you uh, in Statement 2 last night. Well, the fact is, uh, this, if you had been a member of this chamber for even as long as I have, which goes back to 1969, you were seeing this was definitely the golden years of change in economic policy. <laughs> Quite happy to say that today. The speed of the fiscal change and consolidation here has been unprecedented. The changes in the tax system have been the most profound in its history. The change, the improvement, uh, and the improvement and generosity of the social security system has produced, as I said last night, the fairest array of spending policies in the history of the Federation. And in the really difficult areas of the economy, the microeconomy, the things for which you never ever gave any interest or touch. The waterfront, airline policy, telecommunications, all of those deep rutted, rutted in problems we're now tackling. So why do you think we should eschew the term the golden years of change? Of course it is. It is the golden years of change. And, uh, and in May 87, I can't remember what quote you used from the May 87 statement, but let me just say this, the May 87 statement changed fiscal policy by $4 billion in one measure, one statement, 4,000 million. I remind you of the last attempt by the former government, the so-called Razor Gang. It was 250 million, 250, so it was 4 billion, 4 billion. And, uh, and then you talked about uh, bringing home the bacon. Well, let me say this, this was before, yes, I did, I did, yes before we had a very sharp lift in the terms of trade. Oh. And if you pick up statement two and look back at uh, the overlay of the terms of, chart, the terms of trade on G&E, a chart which has the overlay of the terms of trade on, on domestic demand, you'll find every time the terms of trade have gone up, so too has domestic demand. So too has domestic demand. In other words, we had a surge in demand which was unavoidable, which was unavoidable and which has led to bringing back, bringing to this country imports which we simply didn't expect. But the other thing you'll find in statement two is also a commentary that since the removal of exchange controls, we've invested $60 billion offshore. And the Treasury makes its clear in its commentary, we are now carrying that debt on the current account for a future generation to enjoy that investment. We're carrying, of the $100 billion of private onshore debt, 60 billion of it has been incurred investing in a benefit for a future generation. So if we were not to have had that 60 billion invested offshore, our private onshore debt would be more like 40 billion and we'd have a much more manageable position on our hands. But my view is that that longer term investment in Europe and North America and Asia is worth having and that's why it's there. 
And finally, in your reference last night to the text about the reformation of the economy, what else could you describe it as being but a reformation? Well, what, el what else could you describe such a fiscal change and a, and a structural change as being? And I can only put the, the sarcasm in your question down to your lack of experience in the House of Representatives and the fact, the fact, the fact you're a, a very a very dull, a very dull, a very dull, a dull observer of events, or a slow learner, or both. 